Stress and autoimmune disease. I'm going to actually talk about stress and chronic problems, acute problems of all sorts. I have a patient who came in, she's about 30. She had some tough circumstances hit. Mother passed away suddenly. Relationship ended. Dog got sick. All in the same span of time. She now has an autoimmune disease, scleroderma, where your skin gets really tight and painful and burns and it's terrible. All brought on, brought on by mental and emotional reaction to a set of circumstances. I have another patient in her early 50s, goes through a really rough divorce. In that time, she's so stressed out. So stressed, she gets Sjogren's syndrome autoimmune disease. I help her navigate her way through that. She's doing much, much, much better now. As time went on, as perspective improved, her condition is now much better and her chronic neck and back pain that really flared up during that time became a lot better as well. I have a patient with colitis, uh, with flare-ups of colitis from time to time. So that's another gastrointestinal autoimmune disease. There is no doubt, I ask her, I ask her looking straight at her, I ask her, do you think stress is causing this? She says, yes. I think people know that when they have this chronic drip, drip, drip of stress that happens every day that changes the entire chemistry of all of our cells and glands and organs, sympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system and all of that. It changes our physiology, it changes our body, and then cells begin to break down so the new cells are not quite as good as the old cells and so forth. And if we get a collection of cells that are mis malfunctioning and not behaving, some people call that cancer, so that's related to that as well. I know of a story from Dr. Jeffrey Bland. He talks about a woman who had a significant other, went overseas with this person, got, became detached from the family because of that relationship, becomes pregnant, about to deliver, significant other leaves. She goes into delivery without autoimmune disease, comes out of delivery with full-blown autoimmune disease, and within a uh, few years after that has had joints replaced and so on and so forth from rheumatoid arthritis among other problems, here again is an acute emotional stressors, and some of them chronic, leading to all kinds of major joint and organ dysfunction. I have a patient just today in the office coming in with a flare-up of chronic neck pain. And we go back, because it's only been a handful of days, and I said, so what's going on? What, what do you think triggered this? And well, you know, I had my head down, I was doing some phone stuff and some computer stuff. And I said, yeah, well, you kind of do that. And I said, what else? How's the stress level? And she said, oh my goodness, through the roof. I said, do you think that's related? And again, she says, yes. So she has a chronic flare up, can't even move her neck, lying down, she's ah, screaming and so forth because her neck pain is so bad, but she didn't injure herself. She didn't fall down a flight of stairs. She didn't lift up an air conditioner. Stress was the straw that broke the camel's back and, and flared up that situation. I have a new patient now who has essential tremor, anxiety dependent tremor, a non-Parkinsonian tremor caused by stress. He had very significant events that most of us will never have in our lives happen to him when he was younger. So he has essential tremor or anxiety or stress-related tremors that he has all of the time in parts of his body, not caused by some, of, some common neurological dysfunction in his brain, except for stress. So that's what I wanted to introduce here. And I'm seeing, I could just continue for hours on examples of patients that I have that have these problems and disorders, not necessarily caused by just stress, but are certainly aggravated by stress, certainly slowed down in their progress and improvement by stress, certainly lengthens the time that it gets to, better, gets to, to get well again by not addressing the mental and emotional aspects of their physiology.
So let me take just a couple of minutes and give you some suggestions. I started my journey with trying to take better control of my thoughts and my emotional intelligence. Starting with my first mentor, as I had mentioned, Dr. John Whitney, when I was still a, a chiropractic student. And he introduced us 31 years ago, actually, to Earl Nightingale. Earl Nightingale has had many uh, great programs, and one of them called Lead the Field, which I still have to this day, that I still listen to to this day 31 years later. And he started te teaching us concepts such as, we become what we think about. And the only true freedom that we have anywhere in the globe, anywhere in time, in any country, in any circumstance, is the ability to control our thought. Earl Nightingale started to teach me that. Then I moved on to other people and recordings and books and transcripts and ideas and so forth. Tony Robbins being a big influence. Tony Robbins and Peter Diamandis of XPRIZE. The two of them were being interviewed and both of them said, turn off the news. Turn off the news. It's going to just cause fear and negativity and negativity and fear and it's going to start programming your computer for disaster. So turn that off and my suggestion is, is Listen to a little, just enough to get through your day, and then start to program yourself with information that's going to make a positive impact on the programming of your supercomputer. And that makes sense to me. Tony Robbins, Peter Diamandis, they have great programs out there. Go, your, go on your computer or your phone and start plugging in these. Maybe just some background meditation music. Dr. Joe Dispenza has great meditation tracks. I listened to his book a couple of times, Becoming Supernatural. Fantastic read. Go get that. Drop the newspaper in the magazine. Fill yourself up with something like that. Bruce Lipton, The Biology of Belief. Bruce Lipton talks about how cells in certain environments will change, morph, alter, and become that environment that they're in, or in this petri dish over here. This one will change and morph and adapt. And this one over here, stem cells will change and morph and adapt into its environment. So it's not the DNA that causes problems. Many scientists, myself included, agree that 95% of chronic disease and ailments that we have in, in human existence is not from faulty DNA, but rather than the environment, our emotional state of mind and that chemistry. Biology of belief. Dr. Wayne Dyer, Anything by Dr. Wayne Dyer. Zig Ziglar, another person that I listened to. Dr. Kim Duramo, the Mind Body Toolkit. P put Dr. Kim Duramo into Google and get to her information and, and listen to some of her videos and her book, Mind Body Toolkit. And I think she has another one out there as well. She was a medical physician that was ill. And she had all these funky symptoms. And she gets tests and doctors and more tests and scans and pictures and tests and nobody could find anything. And she realized it was stress. So she completely changed her practice now into helping people improve their emotional mind to deal with chronic disorders. Lisa Rankin, Lisa Rankin, uh, Mind Over Medicine, fantastic book, great videos, great to listen to. Another way of programming your brain and taking control of these thoughts and ideas. Les Brown and another one, another one, anything by Les Brown, just to start listening. Andrew Weil has um, several different programs, even meditation CDs, and he's collaborated with other people that can help as well regarding meditation and mind mindfulness. Andrew Weil. Eric Thomas, you can go and listen, listen to his material if you'd like to, buy some of his products to start programming with them. And Eric Thomas gives you a little bit more energy in his delivery. Um, whereas uh, someone like Thich Nhat Hanh, uh, the Buddhist, or Louise Hay might be a little bit softer in their delivery, but they're stay saying the same stuff of programming your brain instead of that fear and negativity into positiveness and preparing your day, winning the morning and you win the day. Uh, a Course in Miracles, of course, you could use that as a uh, suggestion. Louise Hay has the Hay House books. If you were looking for a center, I don't know where to get started. Go to Hay House, Hay House books and look at all the authors and materials and programs and downloads and CDs and so forth that you could listen to there for extremely short money. Um, Seth Godin and uh, I like Seth Godin's uh, information. Lynchpin is the book that I love from Seth Godin. No, it's not necessarily, it's not a book about meditation, 
but it's a book about having a better perspective on your day-to-day -day life in your workplace and, and interacting with people and that can make a, an impact on you as well. Simon Sinek. Simon Sinek with his principle of creating work environments where people wake up inspired to go to work, safe while they're there and fulfilled at the end of the day. That sounds like something we should probably pay attention to. He has fantastic videos and audios that you could listen out there. And lastly, a little bit of perspective. Sometimes we need to, to have perspective. I'm recording this just a few days after the 75th anniversary of D-Day on June 6th of 1944. And that always gives me perspective, and I've, I've read a lot about World War II and, and other conflicts of, of humans on the planet. And so just before the show, we were talking about the movie Unbroken, a uh, book first, and then movie, and I watched the movie. And then the interview with Louis Zamperini at the end of that movie, Unbroken, the movie with the, the who has now since passed away, Louis, uh, that interview with him uh, late in his life and how he was such a, just a grateful, wonderful, loving, amazing human after being a POW in World War II, II and treated so harshly, but came and had complete, total forgiveness with his captors and even went back and met most of them and gave them love and forgiveness. If somebody can do that, I think we can handle cold coffee. Senator John McCain, five and a half years uh, in North Vietnam. Captain Gerald Coffey, one I've listened to many, many years ago. Captain Gerald Coffey, look him up. Seven years, I think, held in captivity in Vietnam. So listen to him again for a little perspective. And of course, Viktor Frankl uh, living through a concentration camp. And I'm reading the book now. I'm not finished with it, but Man's Search for Meaning. Not a light read at all, but boy, it will give you perspective. I'm Dr. Scott Fuller.